Hello, what's happening everybody? Hope you're having a beautiful and amazing day. So very happy to be here. Number 3109. Get kicking things off with some more Bloom CD6. Since the last time we played, uh, there's been an update. Uh, map editor drop, which is pretty sweet. So people are creating challenges and maps and odysseys and stuff. A lot of great ones in here. I haven't played any of these myself, but uh, pretty cool. Full map editor. And also the release of a new map, which is Dark Path. I'm going to play this map. I think we'll finish it today. Um, but basically I did a little bit of uh, just a couple runs on this one. I think this is quite easy compared to most advanced maps. Like if you just look directly compared to Erosion. Um, I'll explain why when we get in here. Before we do, they're going to be kind of fun here in chat and your wonderful support. What's up, Grammar? Captain Canon. Hey there, Graven Fear. Good Code Xander, Shady Dreamer, Qualt, Great Rain, Good Tabby, Cars again, Chicken Talk, uh, Alley Ghost, Pojo, what's up, Great Rain again, Old Chief, Lars Sailor, and all the other cool early people, what's up, Igzy, you know, before I get uh, started here as well, uh, Old Chief, thanks for 42 months, Great Rain, 111, Qualt, thanks for 23, Shady Dreamer, 102, and Grumar, thanks for 58. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's just hop into... Yeah, who do I want to use here? No shortage of good options. I'll just use Benjamin here for a minute. All right, let's go here. Uh, primary only. So uh, this new map only has a couple of tricks to it. Uh, when the only places that are high platforms are here and here, uh, you have these two caves which remove walls if you pay. Uh, the first wall here removes this section. The first wall here removes this section. So both of these removals uh, add some premium placement. So the balloons come down here, they do a full loop, and then they leave. So it really is just a single track map. So like I think some of the uh, things you can get in trouble with here is removing too many walls or trying to force a lot of unit placements but there are uh really really good placements on this map oh yeah new etn skin let's go ahead and pop that out here all right new skin bookworm etn here we go Looks cozy. Okay, here we go. The dart monkey up here. All right, I'm just going to start by removing uh, removing this here. I think this is the best placement that opens up. I'll put this guy dead center. we're getting camo vision naturally here so we can go for quick shots it is a little bit less range though i guess we'll see how it plays out and while this isn't an easy map by any means i think it could have been uh, an either intermediate or advanced Not to say it won't have its challenges, just, uh, yeah. There's a really a disgustingly good mage uh, placement right here. Uh, right here as well. Good for mortar, uh, good for basically any unit that can generate AoE as well.
All right, we're just going to go right into Juggernaut. That glue could perform pretty freaking good up here, too. So not many units that can see through walls here, as far as I can tell, other than uh, ETN, of course. I wonder if I can just save up for uh, save up for Ultra Jug. Juggernaut might be just that good here. I hesitate to remove the other wall because then it's going to be uh, you know, maybe this one. How much does this cost? Five hundred. Okay. No idea what happens when you remove the second wall. I'm going to guess this piece removes for the second. That bounce is sick. Right off the wall, right up in here. Ultra Drug is reachable only because we're on easy difficulty here. It's going to be lesser cost. Yeah, 12, 750 is definitely in range. So I guess the secret to this map is less placements of higher quality, which is uh, a struggle sometimes, but uh, once you realize what the premium placements are, it's less, uh, less difficult. Military only is going to be interesting. Probably planes. Ooh, that's cute. That's the UAV, okay. Makes sense. Yep, mortars military, so it's probably our best option is to slam the middle with mortars. I think plane could perform pretty okay on this map too. Hey, there you have it. Noise. Now you're jiggling. I think this would have been better with uh, with range here. Let's see what this does too. Okay, that's kind of weird. And fair, but... Well, there you have it. That's a uh, one tower victory. Feels nice. I guess you can count this guy in there. You get 2,000 pops. Definitely a good map for Jug if you understand the placement, sure. All right, easy here. Uh, deflation can wait till we take our first break today. Let's go uh, military only. Yeah, I don't 
think so, uh, Bodly. It's uh, definitely worth thinking about this bounce, but I think maybe for Ultra Jug, but this bounce is going here straight down the line. So I think the middle of here is the the best placement for Juggernaut. All right, we're going to do ETN back here this time. This is a pretty sick mage placement too, but I mean, you're getting uh, like the full loop plus the entire back end here. That is a lot of popping power. Oh yeah, we had these platforms here. Let's just uh, let's put down mortar and then I'll slap a sniper up there. Check out the upgrade paths on this guy. Probably go for uh, Bernie stuff and then just faster reloading. We're not going to need the uh, stripping shells here. Do, do, do. Right, coffee time. It's a pretty fair assumption, a big bold flank, but not always. You're asking in a roundabout way if we beat Sanctuary. Yes, we have. I'm definitely open to moving on from challenges and coming back to them, though. Uh, I would say most of the time, if I'm completing a... Uh, if I'm working on a map, I'm going to complete it. But uh, sometimes you just got to take a break, you know? If you think about it, the inside of this map is a lot like, uh, it's a lot like the moon, the moon landing map. Uh, Alright, I'd say the most common uh, mortar path for me is the bottom one to strip camo, and then the fortification stripping down here is really powerful. But I'm a, I like all of the uh, mortar paths. Just not very many maps have a setup where it really makes sense to go into mortar for me anyways because if you're if you're not having a section like this where there's a swirl or a loop then you're gonna have to be moving the mortar around to have it be effective oh nice nice the prime gaming is all of the halloween themed stuff and balloons awesome very cool Alright, let's just go straight into artillery battery here. I don't see why this wouldn't work. No, we are popping lead with the mortar. And after we get that going, I'll probably just go into like main Moab sniper or something. I 
Okay, well, I will say the um, drones or dragons in this case were performing a lot better when ETM was here, so we were firing straight down a line. So the extra coverage here might be good, but it's not well, its not good for immediate popping power. It's still probably the best placement. I'd rather give this placement up to a mage or something if I had it available, I think, than the hero. All right, we blapping. UAV's up. I don't even know if I'm going to take this guy all the way to main Moab. It's probably not necessary. Main Moab in some ways does slow stuff down. Bodo, bodo. Da -dum, da -dum. Anyways, hope y'all had a nice uh, couple days off. Uh, thanks for the awesome birthday stream a few days ago. It was cool, but glad to be here 38 old years old officially. Yo, know, I almost wonder about Jug up here. Like, Jug firing down into the canyon. That sounds really cool. Alright, well, I mean, regular, uh... Regular worked out pretty good. No, no issues with Moabs yet. Also great map for helicopter too, dang. Yeah, uh, the, um... Gatling monkey, there's no place to put it where it actually fires through. I'm not saying it's not good going into the center portion, but you can't get a clean line on the entire map, unfortunately. Hey there, rabbit. Welcome back in. Actually now starting to get excited for our winter fragments. We've got 31 streams coming up in the month of December. I know it's a little bit away, but uh, excitement is building for me now. It's official. We're, we're into the we're into the last quarter of the year. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. It's not bad. The uh, unless this was the laser beam style, the eleven thousand cost one though, you will lose a little bit to the left and right. But yeah, you could run a line all the way down there. It's not a bad unit. Definitely not a bad placement for that one. Maybe even a chimps worthy placement, which is pretty rare for Gatling Gunner. You can see just how strong Mortar is in this position. Anytime you have a loop, uh, Mortar is going to be one of the best units. I think there's some units that are arguably as good as Mortar here, Zorian, but it's definitely going to be one of the best, yeah. Definitely going to be one of the best. Alright. 
go. Get absolutely blapped, just stinky balloons. Yep, I, on the, one of the attempts I did off of the uh, off stream is the basic metals I got. A recursive cluster works really good here, right here too. On a recursive cluster, I went the um, faster firing rather than bigger bombs because the explosion radius is basically the exact size of the central portion. Pretty cool. I would say tier 5 mortar with a usability would definitely clear 98. Oh, that's right, it stuns balloons too. Forgot about that. Oops, all dead. All right. Dude, dude, dude. I think I, I like the ETN's performance better up here. I'm going to put a glue. Oh, it's reverse, right? <laughs> okay. Forgot about that. I think this position is still really good. So in this case, the this position for ETM probably would have been nicer. That's all good. Uh, let's put a mage down right here. That's the one. That's the one. I'm gonna have this guy go, uh, Dragon Breath. Oh, wait, I think obviously Necromancer is very good on this map because of the uh, the swirling nature of the middle. Guided magic. Let's go ahead and stick the uh, flames in the middle spot. some kind of purple balloons coming up pretty soon, I think.
Yeah, there they are. Still got handled. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna go for a longer range just because of... I think we need the range to actually perform here. Great day for some blues. Oh, okay. Since he's up high, it goes over the wall. Well, that answers that question. Now we know. Raised platforms will have full map vision, Zorian. That does not, in this case, make Gatling Gunner good, though. I think the only Gatling Gunner placement of any note is the one up here. Okay, let's go here. It's a lot like the Polyphemus map, Umfreak, where you're kind of trapped. Not trapped, but um, it's a trick to remove multiple. I mean, maybe if you remove everything, there's some kind of uh, point. Let's see here. We should have enough money to do it. Okay, now it says remove for a thousand again. Okay. So it's just done there, fair enough. This placement's really good too. Yeah, I think it's just to try to get you to spend spend money on stuff that you don't need to. I think that's really the the trap on this map is uh going for too many placements or uh going for too many units. Definitely could be a mechanic somewhere in there that's undiscovered yet. It's a very new map. Might as well. Okay, that does increase range. It's good to know. Shredding, they deaden. Yo ho, dumpster gravy. Thanks for 118 months of support. Thank you, dude.
This guy's pretty all right. The well, pop count's definitely good. This would just clear uh, the uh, BFB as is. I'm going to use both my abilities, though, to slam it. one all right apocalypse deflation we'll come back for apocalypse uh after we do a few hard metals here uh let's stick with alternate balloons rounds okay i liked etn better here this is also a really good necromancer spot um, but I think Necromancer can work almost anywhere on this map. So we'll keep it simple. Oh, yeah. like a whole bunch of other stuff I want to try here. Let's get a little sniperoni. It's going to make him for lead popping. We'll have camo available here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not a bad spot for glue. Better than I th imagined it would be. Leave him on first here. Etienne should have camo popping of his own on uh, the next level here. A different style of mage. Now they're both really good spots. I think this one's a little better. More reach into the middle. All right, 24 as camo lead, uh, so I should probably go ahead and use uh, both of the sniper before the level 8 is not going to kick in by then. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, let's just go ahead and grab this now. That way we know 24 will get cleared out.
Yeah, that's a really uh, awesome reach there. Got here 10,800. I'm going to save for that. I can't. to level 8 here. Okay, we're almost level 8 now. Yeah, this angle for the glue is really good. Very sensible. Ten thousand eight hundred. Okay, now we have that, so we can cover camo lead with this. I think I was gonna go right into balloon solver. Let's go ahead and give that a go. That'd be good. Okay, if we're killing reinforced Moab, we're good on most balloon waves now. I'm gonna go to strong here as well. Get to balloon liquefier, then we'll come back for splatter. Uh, liquefier leaves pools of goop on the ground is definitely preferable. Our glue has camo here from our hero ETN who provides global camo vision at level 8. You've been gooped. I think this would clear 63 as is with the balloon liquefier. This is generally a pretty good combo for 63 if it's in a location that's hitting. Take that reinforced ceramics.
that's pretty cool. I hadn't used that ability yet. I guess I did at the end of uh, 60 on the other one. Oh, hey, we're going to have Balloon Solver before 63. That's nice. That's nice. We solving the blues. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, here's a fun one. Uh, let's go faster production. I'm gonna go for spikes here, or the the ones that do the AOE explosion. All right, I gotta be careful here because we are on uh, alternate balloons rounds. So like we could definitely get hit with something I'm not expecting here. Tracks long enough here that Bloon Solver gets to do some pretty good work. Might even be uh, worthwhile on chimps if we use this hero combo. Without uh, without the camo vision, Bloon Solver is a bit uh, well, a bit weakened. Get him. Is birdie. I agree, Ordo. Since they added the uh, liquid pools on the balloon liquefier and balloon solver, it made that pass a lot stronger. Okay, they are getting glued. They're just so overlapped, I couldn't see it. That's fair. I should probably think about grabbing something for 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't think that was going to fit. 
and it didn't. Uh, let's go like this. Should be a pretty sick throw. Alright, we should definitely be good here. Just even a little bit more time on that glue is uh, pretty significant. Yo, Dresman, thanks so much for 57 months of lurking. Enjoy that continued lurk. Thank you. Wave 80 on alternate balloons rounds is like just double ZOMG. So if you're clearing one ZOMG, you're totally fine. Uh, Alchemist buff for glue gunner would be increased uh, radius for the glue gunner and faster application of the glue. I don't believe it would affect the damage on the glue at all, though. I don't know that for sure. I overall don't think Glue Gunner is the best Alchemist target, because he doesn't have a damaging projectile. Alright, crushed him there. Okay, let's do double HP Moabs and go to half cash. Double HP Moab should be pretty chill. Let's try ETN back here. Not bad, not bad. And glue right here could be pretty sick as well. Especially if you had hut support, you'd be getting the entire entrance and circle. Definitely worth thinking about. And drop a cannon up here for right now. I think Quincy up here might be the play for uh, for half cash. All right, let's take a look at uh, as here. Yeah, I kind of want to try balloon impact uh, on this one. We'll go balloon impact frag bombs. Yeah, this radius is okay. Maybe I amplify this with the HUD or something. I think recursive cluster is probably best, but the radius on explosions here when it's firing in is going to hit the other areas as well. I think it can work.
Big bada bolt. Would I miss there? I think I did. Top path, boomerang, we're good in the platform. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. A good, a good unit for sure. It's really big bomb. Okay, we are in double HP Moab, so you need to be careful. Though. Okay, we're having misses here. That's tough, but also fair. Let's just do this for right now. And at least get it uh, boosted. I think this extra range is going to help it not miss. <laughs> there it goes, missing. It's not going to miss versus Moabs, at least, I suppose. Interesting. Is there a spot there? A bigger radius there would be. Okay, let's remove this here. back farther than I expected. A straight A student, in this case, the cannon is elevated above the platform, so when the shot misses, it's going to go through. Um, in the case that the cannon was on the bottom floor and it missed, then it would hit the wall. But right now, the trajectory is too high. Either it connects with the balloon or it goes over the wall in its current state. No problem, straight A student. Great question. Thanks for asking it. But yes, as far as I know, uh, projectiles can miss and hit objects and then cause an explosion, which could technically hurt balloons. It's a very unlikely circumstance, but with a particular placement, it could definitely happen. So we're a little low on damage, that's fair. I'm gonna grab like a Dark Knight here and then uh, go in on this thing. Dun, 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 dun. 
Dun, 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 dun. I don't take care of those stinky moabs. Thirty eight hundred can do. Knockback so good. Grab primary mentoring heroes, keep it as good as we can. Alright, yeah, regular Moabs are dead. Go ahead and toss in a plane here, too, while we have it. Yo, Strong Goose, thanks for making it official with Prime. Cool name, man. Glad you're enjoying the content enough to even consider. Appreciate the support. It takes a lot of people supporting to make this content full-time here in our 12th year. Couldn't do it without you. Yeah, Mr. Frank, the cracked area is unable to be placed on by units. Only solid ground. Though I agree, this cracked spots look like really nice placement areas. Wow, this, look at him getting shoved backwards by the stun and knockback combo. Legit. Legit. this guy rotate the same direction as the dragon oh they're different speeds well in that case never mind what you got here 59,000 I don't think you reach that by 80 I'm just gonna grab the primary hut expertise So we're clearing uh, probably up to 80 right now, but not quite 80 at the current state. Once we have the primary expertise, though, we'll definitely... Double HP Moab is a pretty serious mode, but, uh, you know, Dark Knight is a great Moab game. Some of the best. Uh-oh. That was scary. Uh, the most notable thing in the latest patch is definitely the map editor. Definitely, uh, definitely the one. Alright, we're gonna get up to the primary hut now, and I believe we're good after that.
Not gonna be putting Bomb Shooter in this location again. It works much better where the Super Monkey is. Yo, player Noah, thanks for 87 months. Thank you. The dragons are from the new bookworm uh, skin for ETN, which we're using right now. This should clear 80 right here. I don't see why not. Yeah, thanks, Brian Bless. Appreciate that. Sanctuary was a very tough map. I'm thinking right now about chimps and what kind of strategy I want to use. We have a lot, a lot of options here. As long as we get some quality placements in good locations, I mean, uh, we can do almost anything. I think I'm going to be balloon solvent on chimps. I like the glue gunner up here. It was a really good placement. Like, no misses right below the dart monkey. I'm almost wondering if, like, uh, removing this section and putting down double dart monkey could be a possible start for chimps. Seems not unreasonable. Yeah, I wonder if additional monkey can fit back here. Okay, so we can get two on the platform. But maybe three smalls fits up here. Not that I'd use three in that location, but good to know. Okay, nice. Next up is... Let's go ahead and go impoppable. I'm going to try doing an impoppable attempt with no uh, no income added. I think ETN did best right here. Uh, 
about up here, though? Uh, generally speaking, a soup tree um, in Pop Bowl is one of the only modes I do income for because the prices are increased. Never a bad time for income, though. I find it easier to play without income in a lot of cases if we're going for harder maps and difficulties because having income... Um, it lets you try more stuff, but it also doesn't really give you a proper read on what's good where. Definite exception for Impoppable, though. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this. I'm going to put down Jug. I'm going to do dead center jug here. And even though we're getting map wide camo vision, I think that uh, going for a longer darts is better. And the reason it's better is it makes the projectiles last longer. So if we get all the way up to tier five juggernaut here, it's going to have a much longer persisting orb gives it more chances to bounce into high value targets. Slow spikes up here. Good. Yeah, the first path here, uh, Pandarar, long range darts, makes the uh, projectiles for darts last longer and therefore makes the orbs last longer. If you're going to go for income suit tree, I think that one of the best times to go for income is directly after wave 40. Because if you clear 40, you're almost always clear up to wave 50. So uh, right as 40 clears is a good time to put down a, you know, a marketplace or something like that. It's a pretty safe timing and still leaves you plenty of time to gather income from it. You can definitely get away with it earlier than that, but uh, that's just like a nice, a nice spot. Uh, Etn gains camo at level five. Uh, Grab and fear. The global does not happen until level eight. I'm gonna throw this down here. Okay, this is popping lead, so I don't think I need to upgrade this yet. Like I'm just going to go directly for the stuff I want. Do, do, do. Eighteen grand there, huh? That's a lot. But fair. Yo, nice, Dralios. Uh, checked out the Odyssey myself. And you're not wrong, Pirate Boat is an amazing unit. Freaking fantastic one. Doo 
Yeah, that's true, Harold, it would. Sweet. I think we should be able just to just rush into Ultra Jug here. Let's keep it simple, keep it cool. Definitely be there before 50, which should be my concern. Okay, thanks, Spike Factory. This sure feels like a unit I'm going to use on chimps. It definitely has that feel to it. Alright, next up, now that we have the uh, global camo, I'm going to put glue gunner right here. I'm going to put him on strong. And since I know I'm going all the way to uh, balloon solver here, I'm going to go for stickier glue. So sticky. Get crushed. I think a dart monkey right here on chimps can work, since the darts held in the right hand should be able to hit here and here. Big bada boo. Alright, am I gonna make balloon solver before 63? I don't know about that. Probably though. 40 to 50 has about 15k, so 53 to 63 should get us there. this now okay we have 59 left 59 has a lot of money in it yeah I agree Chipsy that this as it stands may very well clear 63 uh, ultra juggernaut in a good location usually clears out 63 but I can see a problem happening here too Bet you're probably not wrong though.
a 26400. Uh, how about this? Let's just go up here. Then we'll come back from Balloon Solver. Gonna use this on the first set. Okay, Juggernaut is just completely wiping this clean. I get it now. I get it now. Look out, we got a badass over here. We're gonna be solving balloons soon, though, and then what? Hey, what's good, Wiz? All right, we solving the balloons. Damn, that kills BFB that fast. Balloon Solver is crazy awesome. Oh, hey, does Hut fit on top of these? Okay, okay. Young strong yarn. Yo, Mad God Rando, thanks for 116 months. Good afternoon to ya. Thank you. I'm gonna grab perma spikes here so I can just see how this configuration holds. Bet it's gonna do pretty good. Yo, Smux Evel, no, no, thanks for 126 months. Thanks for the belated birthday wishes as well. Appreciate that. Thirty-six, thirty-six.
All right, 36 down. Hey, thanks a lot, Nutty Buckeye. It's been good. Let's just see how it goes. Blue Solver's got to be crushing at 284,000 already. So Blue Solver is great in this type of position where you can get at the start of the track, coating most of the balloons. It has to play catch up, not near as good, but it is very awesome. Oh, cool. We got the powered up um, dragons here. I usually leave ETNs targeting as is. Uh, I think they're all fine. There's a few situations where changing it could be makes sense, but I find they overall perform pretty similar. And ETN is very rarely the unit that's solving like balloon leaks and stuff. Not bad, we we're clearing DDTs there. Firma Spikes also clears DDTs, so I think it's time to just sit and hold here until something bad happens, so we see at least one leak. And then when we see one leak, I will maybe put down another unit or buff the Juggernaut or something. This is more of a cur curiosity attempt than anything. That's a cool purple, man. Okay, we did see some slips there, right? I mean, not a lot, but something. Not enough to be uh, challenging the perma spikes, though. Looks like there's enough space on this map for Balloon Solver to take care of the DDTs. These aren't reinforced BFDs. There's no problem here. Ninety-seven could be interesting, but I could eat ninety-seven with the perma spikes alone. We're good here. Okay, there's some slips. Did eat a chunk. There's 98. 99. Uh, I'm like half considering if this holds or not. 73,000 on hand. Let's just keep it simple here. 
If I need to, I'll use the ability, but I'm not convinced I need to. Okay, we're gonna have to use this. Insta monkey, looking good. All right, so remaining modes that we have left are deflation, which I'm gonna set up here for my lunch break. We have apocalypse, and we have ch half cash and chimps left. So instead of deflation, we'll come back to half cash, apocalypse, and then chimps. Um, with how much money we had left there, we have a lot of options for chimps mode. Okay, let's go deflation here. Okay, I'm going to set up a uh, necromancer here, our first necromancer of the day. Gotta go guided magic, so we can't see the wall without it. Let's go ahead and plop down this here. If I do that, I'm gonna have trouble with purple balloons. Let's set up this guy. Okay, here we go. We used a uh, Moab Eliminator for 100 and used a couple abilities. Okay, good. I think Dragon Breath will do it. All right, I'm gonna set this on auto start here, and then I'm gonna stand up, uh, take a quick break here, eat some food. Are you prepared? Thanks to my lovely wife. Oh, look at that good boy right there. Let me fix the size of the cam. We'll be back in a few minutes for some more balloons pop in action.
Alrighty, have returned. Thanks for your patience during that brief one. Let's head back into our attempt here. Gonna hit the speed up button. Be back. We fed. Boom, 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 boom. It's working pretty good up here. With a hut bonus, he'd be all the way out here. Primary, he'd be even further. I bet this is a map where you could maybe even make uh, Glaive Lord work. Although it's not an optimal position, it's pretty good. Basically, since they loop around, you could count the uh, you could count the loop twice. So even though you're only getting uh, technically one pass, you get two passes because they loop around again. I could I could dig it. Oh, hey, we even have the ability here. Awesome. Let's pop the ability at 60. Things you do. Do you really need to be eating food right now? Huh? Do ya? Do ya? Ah, oh, now she's hungry. That's right. Alright. Looking good. Alright, so Apocalypse and Half Cash. I think I'm using Quincy here. So Apocalypse, so we're not, uh, even without Auto Star, automatically goes, uh, has kind of randomized waves than a certain value. How I'd imagine how waves are populated in Apocalypse is certain things can start spawning on certain waves, and after that point, it's like the game generates a point value for the wave, and then it generates whatever it's going to generate from there. So, like, after Moabs are a possibility, you could choose to spend almost all the points of generating just Moabs, or it could do a bunch of ceramics, uh, etc. Yo, whale noises. Thanks for 36 months during that break. Appreciate the three years in Vox, and thanks for 10 months. Appreciate that resubscription as well. Thank you all for all the ways you choose to support this content. Would not have this experience without you. That's true.
I think the toughest part about Apocalypse is there's no in-between cash, in-between round cash. So you lose out on a lot of money with that. Hopefully making this before lead can appear, which would be 28. Oh, yeah. Got him. All right, now what are we putting down? I think probably just a mage here. This is a map where you could feasibly pull off Necromancer in Apocalypse 2. Probably the easiest victory. No Necromancer for me here, though. Mortar is probably also very viable on Apocalypse on this map in particular. Thanks, Big Merc. Yeah, it was a, it was a good, uh, good challenge, Sanctuary was. I mean, I feel like Juggernaut is also going to be the half-cash solution. I think it's just, like, the best unit here so far. Might try a few different things on Chimps mode. Might go back to Mortar, uh, in fact. Even if I just put down this without going all the way into Ultra Jug, it's still really, really good. now. Got the upgrade just in time. Victory! Okay. I honestly don't know Big Merc, but it should uh, be reflected in the stream titles in the VODs or the thumbnail. All right, half cash next.
think I'm going to open with mortar here. Get a nice discount on it. We don't have camo vision on this one. Or no. No ETN. Easy enough fix. I'm just going to go Necromancer right here. I think it's going to be very cost effective. Start with Bernie stuff, though. Yo, Coda PDX, things for 114 a month. Six more for a decade. Thank you, Coda. Okay, so we got camo hit on Quincy here. That'll clear us through 33. 37 will probably need some camo help, but we'll have that by that time. I'm just going to get to 0, 2, 2, and then I'll put down a Necromancer. Hey, it was great, Macassabrot. Thank you for the belated birthday wishes. Appreciate that. Nice to be on this planet in this universe for another year. guided magic here so I can see through the wall. That's for sure. Okay, lead's getting cleared out by Bernie stuff. Oh yeah, also Quincy fires a, a explosive arrow every third shot, so good for him. grab this and then I'm going to go into Necromancer. We should be making that at like 38, 39. Oh wait, this is half cash. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we're not going to be making Necromancer before 40 then. I was calculating like we were playing half cash here. Not the case. I think we can still clear out the Moab here. With usabilities, definitely.
I'm just going to grab this and work towards it. I think I can clear the... Uh, well, but here I'm going to do a little bit of micro with the... Excuse me, with the mortar here. <laughs> Mess that up. That's fine, not going to be deadly. All right, cool. Definitely would have cleared that if I would have started the, uh, the stuff up here. It's a big loop, then a small loop, Brokius. Like one and a half, I think would be the... Where I'd put it. Now what half cash? Now what? I think we're just gonna go into artillery battery here. Seems fair. Sweet. So anything that's not reinforced, we're going to be all right. I think with usability, we could even clear 60 here. Hey there, short stack. Thanks for 88 months, 12 more for triple digits. Thanks, man. I think this is definitely one of those positions where the uh, Necromancer can provide 100 or near 100% camo coverage. Alright, cool. We should be making the tier 4 sniper of 463. Uh, makes me strongly believe it's going to get cleared. I think one of the main strengths of the mortar is it doesn't really have a maximum amount of units it can hit. So when you have a circling area like this, you can just get a ton of value out of it for that reason. I'm going to use a few abilities here, too. Yes, this is the official map releasing with uh, patch 39. Okay, we still had some slips there. Uh-oh. 
Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I think if I just had a uh, spike factory back here, that would have been good. Could have also used the uh, abilities there. That's fair. Oh yeah, you know, or just putting Juggernaut down also would have done it. Nope, no Paragons this update. Full map editor, though. They did mention something about the Paragon uh, in the in the patch notes. I don't remember exactly what it said. I think next year, something like that. They're also working on a new hero right now. Uh, Mortar definitely needs vision of camo in order to hit it. But we're going to solve that with Necromancer here. You can also solve that by going uh, bottom path here. This is also camo vision. Yo, Goss 6, thanks for 82 months. Appreciate that prime continuation. Thank you. Yeah, as we discovered doing their stuff, uh, the order does need vision of camo balloons to hit them. Always a comical stream moment for me when somebody asks the question. I literally just finished answering. That's not a, that's not like I'm frustrated with you or anything. I just think it's funny. Just a funny thing. Uh, 
definitely reasonable not to have heard my answer, or maybe not even been in the stream when I was answering it. I just think that's one of those funny stream things. When the word finishes coming out of my mouth, somebody asks the same question I just answered. Such is the life of streaming. Nothing to apologize for doing Lurk stuff. Not even. Not even inconvenience, just uh, a humor for me. Let's grab Juggernaut, then we'll grab uh, Necromancer. Jug. All right. What's next in our half cash setup here? I think I think Necromancer is like pretty hard to beat the value on. It's a pretty expensive unit for half cash, but if you can get it down, I mean, it's a, it's a workhorse. I haven't tried two small units here yet. Uh, straight A. My uh, my guess is that they'd have to be a little bit further down, like in the quarters here, to work. But uh, I haven't seen it myself. A very fair question. Alright, if we make it to Artillery Battery, I gotta, I gotta assume this clear is 63 with the Juggernaut being added in. There wasn't much of a slip on 63 last time, so I'm gonna go into uh, the Mortar here, and then I'm gonna put down Spike Factory in the back just to catch any weird slips that might happen. Should have more than enough money to do that, because at this point I had bought that uh, very expensive Sniper, which is uh, well, a little bit inefficient. No Juggernaut, that's for sure. Clearing regular Moabs. Awesome. go up to long life spikes with white hot spikes and we're going to stop there.
a mage right here. Alright, 60 is clear and nice and easy. I think 63 clears here just because we have the Juggernaut this time. This Juggernaut is uh, exceptional just because of the placement area. Yeah, okay, still a little slip there, but pretty big difference. Gonna use the uh, Mortar ability on the second set here, and then I'll use the Reign of Arrows on the third. I actually think the Reign of Arrows is a higher power level than the Mortar. I'm just going to grab Arcane Spike here, and I think that covers our half cash. Yeah, can't confirm Ultra Jug is very good on this map. But for half cash, I want something that can also extend past the circle. Get it 10-800, 10-800. Feeling like a winner to me. Spikes out. There's no way with usability this doesn't clear uh, 80 in the middle. It's gotta. Maybe even without a usability, this would work. get crushed. Okay, some made it through there. That's fair. Alright, 
All right, 70. We're going to do use abilities twice here. One. Looking good. I'm curious how we do versus these reinforced. I think we're still fine here. Oh, yeah. Alright, wave 80, half cash. Here we go. Seven and a half thousand in the bank. We're just that good on this map. Just that good. Get roasted. Yo, Windwax, thanks so much for five months support. Appreciate that prime continuation, dude. Thank you. Alright, final metal remaining. It is... Chimps. I think I'm going to try moving back to ET and Let's check out a start on this one. I think I got one right off the bat. Time will tell. So if I remove this, I have 400 remaining. That's not quite it. What if we start here? Let's also check if we can get double uh, monkey here. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Let me look in the sandbox real quick, because I don't really think there's an opportunity to do this outside of that. Yeah, okay, so if you want to put two small monkeys here, they got to be like this. Further back. This guy's a rock star. Probably uh, stands to reason this guy's good too. I want to try this out. Not as good as I hoped. It's got to be on this side if it's going to do it. Oh, that's actually a better angle than I imagined. Give it a shot. Yeah, it looks like no on that, huh? That's definitely fair. Oh yeah, let's let's uh let's try this out real quick. I'm gonna try removing the platform and just placing the one dart monkey. this placement might actually be good enough to justify that. Okay, I was wrong. Here and then here. I think this should be a pretty good spot for Boomerang. We're not getting the monkey knowledge uh, benefits, but it should still be pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Let's just see how this holds. It is chimps, after all. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Pretty sure this guy is just, like, the best. Put 
this guy in strong here. What does this read? Can pop it to eight balloons per throw. I think we actually want long range rings and then red hot rings for more damage. Man, what a monster spot for Moonbrain Monk. Be a good spot for middle path boomerang monkey too. Just might. Okay, I hit it. Incredible. I'm gonna guess the end of wave 10 we die here, but I want to let it ride just to see. Here's moment of truth. Oh yeah. Maybe I didn't need that? I don't know. Alright, fair enough. We're going to need a little bit more there. I'm going to keep my first this time. I think I just popping a dart monkey back here is going to do it. Long range rings held for a lot longer than I anticipated. can kind of see in the, the wall there. Let's uh, keep it simple here. Let's go sniper. This should let us get our hero down, I think. Yeah, I agree that Moab Press Monkey on top could be uh, of an immense quality in this position. You'll get no argument from me. The surprising thing is how effective this Boomerang Monkey is for uh, no monkey knowledge. The monkey knowledge for Boomerang Monkey is really, really good. One round later is no big deal. He's keeping it cozy under his blankie. All right, next up, I'm just going to put a spike factory down. Just, I'm not really even interested in upgrading this. I'm just putting it there so it can catch anything that slips. Upgrading heroes would also... Uh, never mind. Whoa, we got that one. Lucky me. That was close, dude. Want to catch any little slips that might happen. It also covers camo, which is pretty cool. Means we're good on camo through 37. I think what I want to try is the middle path here.
All right, hey all, our ads are about to roll. Uh, thanks to those that do let those play, appreciate it very much. Uh, as a reminder, we do three minutes per hour, which is exactly enough to remove pre-rolls, and I believe the bare minimum to play here uh, on the site. I do try to keep those out of gameplay, but since they play automatically, can't guarantee that all the time. Uh, thanks for your patience during this brief intermission. Just gonna stand up, stretch my legs real quick, use the restroom, grab some water, and then we'll be uh, back into uh, this chimp's attempts. Be right back. All right, we're clear and I'm back. Thank you so much for your patience during that brief intermission. And if you let those ads play, I do very much appreciate it. It does support a lot. If not, I totally understand. Thanks for being here to share this time and place. All right, so do we have map? We have camo vision yet? We don't, but between ETN and this spike factor, we got 37 covered. And then if we have 37 covered, the global camo is going to kick on uh, before the next critical camo wave, which is 43, I believe. Yo, have a good lurk there, no him top. Enjoy, enjoy your cozy. I'm just going to grab a turbo charge here. I haven't played around with middle path boomerang monkey very much, but I definitely respect it's a, it's a good unit. And I think the position for this boomerang monkey is exceptional. We're going to go for it. I bet this is normally taken on the glaives route. Not to say this is in any way bad. Those look cool. Oh, 
All right, we need some uh, cleanup crew action here. Let's just go for Mortar. Uh, mortar is definitely a much more rare take for me compared to uh, Necromancer. Uh, I think it's very fair to say that Mortar works on less, works well on less maps than Necromancer would. Get roasted. Yo, Malta, thanks for 62 months, five years, and climbing. Yeah, they are indeed uh, EMR. This is the Bookworm ETN. Trying right now to think of units I haven't really done yet that would also be pretty effective. I think I've tried most of the things I want to try on this map. I think that like a flash bomb ninja in here could be really good. I haven't removed this platform yet today. Uh, Juggernaut's amazing right here. I think we've proved that uh, multiple times. Blue Gunner with ETN up here, uh, Bloom Solver specifically, I think really strong on this map. Done that too, though. All right, let's do this right here. Keep this one weird, but also fun. Great combo, weird and fun. Hmm. This is much further back than I was anticipating. Okay, then. That's, that's way more into the circle. Look at the difference uh, in with the distance of the monkey's feet to the ledge. I'm going to go all the way back here to place this much space versus here, literally on top of the track. I think the cost on this got um, up. It did. It was like 3,000 something, I think. Hey, in this case, I am going to go larger radius. This means that this ice monkey is going to be unable to hit um, DDTs, but will be much better versus almost everything else. Okay, let's put down one more quality unit here, and let's make it one we haven't used today. I haven't put a ninja down. I haven't put druid down, engineer, beast handler, boats, of course. Uh, based on my past experiences, Pinochle, Ring of Fire would indeed uh, go through the walls. Once you reach the, the, the top tier, this one, Inferno Ring, definitely goes through walls. Like, it's an area around the tower. 
this one, probably not through walls, or at least it wouldn't activate uh, through the wall. It's going to be a very silly attempt. We're going to go for it, though. I think with use abilities, I'm through, like, 85 right now. Okay, the cost on this got lowered. 49,000 is actually kind of uh, accessible. And we're certainly going to go long range here, because once the Inferno Ring's active, we want it covering as much of this central portion as possible. I think that was 54,000 before. Yeah, you can see here it's not hitting through the wall, I don't think. Getting blocked by the, the structure. That's fair. The only downside to my current strat is I have to manage my use abilities in some cases, but uh, we got a lot of great use abilities. Boomerang Charge, uh, Mortar Storm. We can keep it spoopy chilly at any time. We can activate the dragon. We got the goods. Okay, 49,000. What are some waves of concern right now? 63, obviously, right around the corner. I'd say 64 with the amount of Moabs that it has is actually pretty concerning, too. I think anytime we see a reinforced Moab, we should consider using an ability of some sort. Like, this ability, this ability... I guess this one, too, is a little more ambushing than uh, this. This only works in this zone, but it works very well. Yeah, main mob and the sniper is definitely uh, probably a good choice. See how we're performing versus wave 60 here. Look at that little dart monkey doing his darndest. Good job, bud. Yeah, Moab damage is the weak point of my build right now. True. I don't think I'm making Ring of Fire right now without adding another unit. The feeling I'm getting. How about this? Ooh, you can get really far over on the stairs. Okay. This is like a realization for me. We can get two great units on this top one here. This is my favorite uh, ETN ski er, skin yet. The dragons. The UFO one's also very cool. But what a great, great new skin this year. I used my ability right before the start of 63. That wasn't uh, all that wise. Let's go right here. Let's keep it chilly. They spoopy and they chilly. Get blasted. All right, second set, I'm going to use the plane. I'm going to activate plane when they're in here. 
Because I believe that will give me enough firepower. Oh yeah, 63 is getting crushed here. The dragon might even still be up at the start of the next set, which would be awesome, indeed. Didn't even need the mortars. Alright, now we're going to try to straight save for the tier 5 tax shooter. All right, if we're successful on this chimps attempts, uh, the last thing I'm gonna do on this map is I'm going to uh, just do a regular hard mode run, and then I'm gonna use no income, but we're gonna see how far we can get uh, into the waves. So no income, uh, endless attempt. Just for funsies, to try to place our best towers in the best positions and see what we can make happen. I'd say a beast handler could definitely work good on this map. A bird has the highest benefit on maps that are more than one track, but it could certainly still be very nice here. You can drag things back uh, into the zone where they have to go in the circle again. Good synergy. Yeah, no Paragon for the uh, next attempt either, because no income. Then we get Blame Mode. Kind of makes more sense to grab this first. Really not that much more. You know, just 12,000. I think I am going to be getting a Tier 5 Boomerang before anything else. Get roasted. Basically, uh, two big bold flanks, so it's kind of more like one and a half. They take a large circle around, and then they take an inner circle, and then they leave. Extremely similar to the, uh, the moon landing uh, pattern. And the cats are out of control today. Do you believe I say that at least once every stream? What is my life right now? Full of cats is what it is. Just for curiosity's sake. Oh yeah, you can reach both on the platform there. Good to know. Yeah, Daisy's been super extra for like three or four days now. I don't know what's going on with her. I'm going to go for the permacharge. I think I've actually used permacharge less often than I have uh, the Ring of Fire. They're both good, but Boomerang is operating right here. Oh, hey. 
Okay, here we go. Dang, it doesn't quite reach. That's fair. Wonder if a bigger radius is gonna reach. I kinda think no, but maybe it will. I'm willing to try. Not quite. Okay. Well, we've already sunk so much into this. Let's just do it again. Interesting on the spacing on placements here. Okay, he's in the hut now. Cool. Just costs us like a bajillion monkey bucks. No big deal. Radius. Dang. Doesn't even need the alchemist. Not that it's hurting anything. shredding. They didn't. Hey, Mad Process. Thanks for 26 months. Thank you. Yeah, cats be like that, sir. They do. Ah, I like it, Elias. I like it. Leave some for the rest of us, boomerang monkey. Dang, dude. Eighty-seven here. Let's pop the the power. Oops! All shreds. Yeah, DDT is the big question mark on this build right now. I agree. I think by the time we have a real DDT threat, ninety-five, we're gonna have Inferno Ring. So it's gonna be I. The Ice Monkey, even the ability, cannot currently hit DDTs. Gonna use ETN's ability here for the first one. Oh yeah, we're fine. This guy's doing great versus EDT. What a lad. Yep, we're going to make this before uh, 93 here. Let's 
That is a nice looking Inferno ring there. Lousy. Go strong here. Okay, I think we're clearing 95 now, almost certain. Probably use plane ability on 95. Definitely using boomerang ability on 98. Uh, the cave removes the blocks on each side, so this cave removes this block, this block, this block, and this block at increasing prices, and this cave re removes this, 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 and up here. All right, 95 is clearing. Seven is definitely tough. Oh my god, these cats. Penny's like hanging off of her bed, looking around. Sure. That's something you can do. Definitely an option. shouldn't have used that before 100, but here we are. I think it'll be back up by the time it matters. Let's get some raw damage in here. Cool. I think we're gonna have time to boomerang at the end. Over a mill pops for this guy. What a lad. What a lad. GG. Not bad. One try chimps attempt on that one. All right, got one more thing we're going to do here, and that's going to be... Uh, an attempt where we try to go endless, but no income. So it's not really going to be endless, but uh, we'll see how far we can get with the unit placements we used today that were good and uh, with what we learned. I'm going to use Psy for this. So we'll just go here. We're going to go hard mode, standard. And we'll go free play at the end. No banana farms or other income generating towers. Okay, where does Psy want to be? I think this Psy wants to be somewhere where they can influence the center 
So probably right here. Yeah, right up against the wall, and then our stun will hit about halfway through the circle. I think that sounds good. Alright, for our next unit, I'm going to remove this cave. I'm going to put the Juggernaut that's been just an absolute badass right here. This guy has been Rockstar every time we put him down. He certainly has to be part of the Endless Step. I think this unit can even be separated from the other placements. Like, it doesn't need to be near a hut or anything. It can just stand alone as something we spend money on. Just going to Juggernaut with... I think it was quick shots got through 40 on on easy mode That bounce is so good. So good. Let's just go right into Juggernaut here. I don't see any reason this won't work. When it hits the wall just right and bounces through here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Even when we're using uh, the camo here, it really felt better to take this option because it makes these uh, orbs persist for longer, so more bounces. Okay, I think from this point we can go into Discount Hut. Is there any spot where Necromancer would not clear ammo? I guess uh, if we're going for ways past 100, if a bad pass back here uh, and the DDTs are back here, the mage would maybe not reveal them in time. So I probably just forego discount as well, which I suppose is on theme for uh, what we're doing right now. No income added. This is as close to the center of the path here as possible. Gotta be guided magic here, not just so we can see through the wall, but also so that the uh, reanimated balloons were actually starting in the back of the circle, have time to circle around and then come all the way back through. Or most of the way back through.
I'm a little bit curious about Vine Druid and what that looks like in here. Can't be bad. Let's get our let's get our base set up here before we make any deviations though. If you're gonna go for Vine Druid, this spot would be the absolute best, I feel. We're actually gonna go even a little bit smaller. Just influencing the size of the uh, necromancer balloons. Easy forty clear. All right, if we got that done, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go up to Ultra Jug here. We know it's good because it is good. I think this Prince of Darkness should really cover 100% of camo, even in the super late game. The only thing it wouldn't cover is a bad popping back here, and at that point, the run's pretty much lost, anywho. Let's see what this feels like on strong. Oh, I love that overlap of the, the edge of the the chasm here. I'm going to go Arcane Spike Mage right here, and then I'm going to go Prince of Darkness. This, I think, is one of my favorite placements on the map so far that I've seen. Doesn't really work for Dragon Breath or Archmage, even with Guided, because this wall does block the Wall of Fire. Not Wall of Fire, the Dragon Breath. You can still place the fire in there, which is nice, but I think the bottom cross path is uh, maybe a little bit nicer. Also, Arcane Spike is wicked good at taking down the land. Valid strategy if you're using Psy on 63 is you're going to have the one and the two abilities to handle two of the ways of 63, so you can build any other unit that um, can handle 63, like a, a freeze. Freeze monkey's nice, you can just freeze the one wave. Adding in an additional uh, ability is a good way to clear that, the point I'm getting to. Place units in between here. Oh, can't.
I do fully believe that this setup clears 63, though, just on Ultra Jug itself. Not sure. I don't think this strong has really been making this perform better than first. It's kind of a randomness with first as it's aiming at different portions of the wall, and I think that's best. I gotta decide what to do after Prince of Darkness. I'm kind of thinking what worked well here and what didn't. Thinking maybe Boomerang Monkey and Glue Gunner standing side by side would be an amazing complement to these two, especially, especially the Relentless Glue. That's what we're gonna do. Balloon Solver is also very nice up front, but eh, maybe not not as exciting as uh, glue for me, or the other path of glue rather. Oh, yeah, we can reach past the halfway point with the stun. Mute. All right, get on this run. We're going to be placing units, no income, and then we're going to see how far past 100 we can get. Um, just curious done quite a few attempts today and they've been uh, real fun. It seems like certain units are just amazing on this map due to the circular uh, nature of the center. There it is. That's the one. I'm gonna go smidge smaller here for this one. So we can see the projectiles on the juggernaut. Let's go to 55 here. There we go. It's kind of a cool perspective. It actually makes it kind of look like they're rising up out of the, uh, the chasm when they're that small. Pretty cute. I don't think I'm going to go tier 5 here. Let's go tier 4, though, so we get some discounts on these placements, I guess. I'm uh, going to go radar scanner as well. Okay, we're going to put glue, but out to the left. Yes. Actually, maybe the boomerang wants to be on the inside here. Let's, uh, let's put the glue as close to the entrance as possible. Yeah, that makes sense for relentless glue. Since we, well, hold on. Let's look at some tooltips here. We're going into Relentless Glue. Pop balloons that were glued stun nearby balloons. Seems like we want to go glue soak with that, but glue splatter also has its merits. 
I believe I'm going all the way to super glue. And in that case, uh, glue soak is much nicer. So we'll go here. Who doesn't like some corrosive glue? Balloons, probably. I just noticed the orb projectiles are also smaller. It's fair. I think I'm going for super glue next here. I believe. Okay, we're going next, we're going free play. All right, 157, 72, 14 is fair. Yeah, a lot of great Paragon options out there, Roddy Box, I agree. No Paragons for this attempt though. There's no income. I was surprised on my sanctuary attempt that uh, we didn't end up using Prince of Darkness. I can remember their name, but the chat member brought up the point that when there's more than one path for Prince of Darkness, while it's still very good, it does dilute the damage a little bit, because uh, every single balloon summoned here is getting a chance to pass through every balloon. Where if it's two paths, the resources split. Still a great tower for multi-path maps, but hey. Oh, that's cool. They made it uh, easier to get higher level Paragons. That's nice. Okay, now that we have super glue down, it's start time to start thinking about another uh, unit here. And it should probably be a unit that does well versus the wave 100 bad. So I could see us losing at wave 100 here. Look how slow they are. Dang, dude. No shortage of amazing options here. I think I'm going to be removing this, but I'm worried about how that's going to influence the Juggernaut bounces. Let's go here.
Yeah, and Bertleman Ice Monkey is a very good choice here, right around uh, this zone. Might be dropping that before 100. Let's see how far we get here. Are you on first or strong? Hmm. Kind of feel like strong might be the better choice here. We do have glue soak, so it goes through. Yeah, DDT is getting stopped in their tracks. Love it. You love to see it. Ninety-one didn't even enter the chasm. Wow. Wowzy, wozy. Looks like we're going to make a uh, perma charge before 100, so I think we can defeat it. Need to make sure this is up for that, though. Right, 95 is crushed here. Yo, Frozen Fire, thanks for 53. Appreciate that continuation. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's under accessibility, Mocha. We have all of our projectiles reduced in size right now. That is to reduce those for sure. All right, we're there, permacharge. a spot on this little platform here? Not really. I mean, maybe embrittlement right here is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, honestly, right here doesn't look that bad. There's probably a hut placement that allows, uh, allows it right here, but um, we'll definitely hit all the Moabs with embrittlement there. Other option is right here. You can see there's a big difference between the radiuses. Locally. This should be a good spot for embrittlement. I don't even think I'm going to go to the tier 5 here. Let's just... I think freezes for longer is what I want. Oh yeah, I don't think so, reinforced EDTs. Not today. I'm gonna be sketch, but I wanna wait to purchase. Oh wow, size 20 right now? What?
Oh, that's the wrong monkey. Oh, we got this. Later, Tater. All right, we're gonna continue here. Just gonna spend the money uh, I get. I think embrittlement was actually pretty important there. I'll spend the money as it comes in. Let's actually remove this. Well, no, that weakens Juggernaut, I think. Life's tough. Bet this guy wouldn't not like a uh, Alchemist buff. Next tier, I think I'm going to be going for uh, the tier 5 primary expertise. Let's also give this guy a bot here. Holy guacamole side, leave some for the rest of us, would you? Yeah, I'll keep that on first. I think the next logical place to go is Perma Spike. Uh, the bot allows you to link to any unit, and then it automatically uses their abilities for you. Also, then unlink it by pressing this button to link to something else. It's not a common occurrence. Oh, he's actually got a lot of pops here. Awesome. From the glue being on there for so long. It makes the uh, the plate smaller too. Uh, 
How many pops you got, dude? 1.8 million? Whoa. I mean, size of 2.3, but 1.8? Slow down. Slow down, sir. Here's where it's gonna get weird. Uh oh. That's scary. Uh, I might actually survive here. All right. Survive 119. That's uh, pretty huge for a no income run. What's our next target here? I think this guy might be good for super brittle. Okay, no. Throw down another bot here. It's a really nice source of damage globally. Yo, Trinan, thanks so much for 59 months. Really appreciate that continuation, dude. Thanks. That's a lot of reinforce. Holy guacamole. Psy is so ridiculous, like ultra late game. Being able just to grab reinforce the OMGs. Okay. Okay, then. took down a few plates there. Not convinced we're going to make it to Carpenter Spikes. That's what I'm looking at here. Yeah, Spike Mines at the start is actually really good here. I agree. Yo, Artery, thanks for 83 months. Appreciate that continuation. Looking good.
Man, there's so much value in HP right there. I think we're gonna make carpet of spikes though. This might be the wave I use size ability on. Or not. Or he's just gonna shake him real good. That works too, man. Yeah, I think after, if we make a uh, spike swarm, I'm going to go for some pushback stuff in here. Uh, maybe even like a helicopter is hovering out in the middle with pushback could be interesting. Should probably just go for the best value though and getting like a buff on this or maybe even this. Life's hard when you have such a good build. Pop, she got Sai. Oh, you know. It was six million. All right, then, using my abilities so we don't die here. A very serious wave. We're a little low on spikes now that, that happens. Yo, SMK Game God, thanks for 127 months. Thank you. There we go. Now what? This tower is so good for global coverage. Oh yeah, well, let's see if we survive this. That's a good place to start. We clear 140. That's pretty cool. Clearing 140 on a build with no income is pretty miraculous. might have been worth using the two ability on just so that the units inside there were targeting the bads instead. Looks like it to me. Yeah, should have done that sooner. All right, very fair. 
That was a very fun attempt. This guy had way more pops than I thought he would. Almost four mil for the uh, monkey there. It's really because of the glue monkey that's happening, because it kept being able to hit the same balloon over and over again. Two mil here. 7.6 on Psy. Five mil right there. Cool mil on the primary. It's just disgusting here, too, for how long that was down. That's amazing. Yo, Crystal Camo, thanks so much for that. 23 months. Appreciate that. That was pretty cool. All right, guys, we're going to swing on over to a uh, run of Nova Drift. I have a build that I kind of dreamed up. Let's see how this goes. Very nice black bordering the new map today. It was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, single, single track map makes it a lot nicer. Let me change the resolution here real quick, and then we'll be uh, we'll be in. Almost there. All right, we're all updated. Uh, if you have not seen Nova Drift, it is a really awesome game about being a biomechanical ship uh, in this universe. As you level up, you upgrade your ship. Things get increasingly harder, more enemies that are faster and tougher spawn, etc. Nova Drift is uh, an asteroid-style game, meaning that it has a uh, thrust and in turn. So it's not a twin-stick shooter in that sense. Okay, we've done a bunch of sword builds usually, or lately, because the sword builds uh, are in the latest update, the Vorpal update. i go back to a weapon I really enjoy, which is Dart, with a slightly different idea for it. I think it's very likely I'm going to drop my shields on this build, so we should just pick the color of weapon that we want. I think I want some cool purple darts, man. Okay, engineer. Okay, we're going to go ally here. It's going to be kind of a construct build. What's going to be tricky here, on darts, you usually take like a bunch of stuff that amplify your weapon. But I'm not going to have a lot of leftover um, points to do so. We're going to kind of go like a halfway into weapons, but mostly into constructs. Overseer run is the idea. Let's for the moment just grab some more thrusters. Movement speed certainly valuable to us. Oh yeah, that's my shield. Oh yeah. Okay, we're dead. That's fair. All right, give me just one second. I'm just going to use the restroom real quick and grab a refill of my water, and then we'll hop into a run and actually maybe get it going, perhaps. Be right back.
All right, we're back. Thanks for your patience during uh, that very short intermission, and thank you for that raid, McQueeb. Hope you had an awesome stream today. Thank you, anybody, anybody coming over from a Queeb stream. Uh, it's got a, a build that I thought about. I wanted to try it out. So here we are. We're going to be doing an Overseer darts build, more or less. There's me darts. Definitely open to trying that sword construct build again, too, but... I think this is what I want for the moment. Okay, uh, let's go purple again. The engineer's not showing here. I'm gonna reroll. There it is. Okay, what I should really take is the first time I see the three projectiles, I should take that instead. Or even like targeting is pretty good here. Nice Nomad game. That sounds really good. I'm not even convinced this build goes targeting. That's how low on mods we're going to be for this one. Grab mines. We're auto-deploying. That's fine. Right now, mines can just add a little bit of extra splash damage. We make them pretty fast. Boy, those purple explosions are pretty. It's a long time to kill this guy with a weak weapon like this. There we go. Okay, loaded mines is definitely good, but let's grab volley for right now so I just have more projectiles. Dart scale per dart stuck in the enemy. So not having more projectiles is just... It's a tough position. Alright. The okay, allies are going to be a big yes here. Also on drones. Okay. Pick interceptor here. He's also shoot darts, not as fast, but you know, enough. What's the other side of this tree? Echo Strike. Ally explosive rounds create additional larger blasts. I'm going to drop my shield on this one and go into the... Uh, what's the mod called? Vital Bond. So I'm not going to take that. I do want Elegant Construction. So what's going to differentiate this build from other builds uh, we've done is we're going to do darts, but no warp strike. It's going to be more about being able to drop cluster damage on big enemies uh, and having Overseer uh, complement. Uh, hard to turn Revelation down, but I really do want loaded mines. Let's just take Revelation for now. This game is such a joy to play. It has this way about it. And while you're playing, you're able to just like tran transcend the moment you're in for just a second. You're just there. Wingman or out? We got out maneuver here. Yo, Mythic, thanks for uh, 82 months once again. Two more for seven years of support. Yeah, I am going to be going Minefield, but I'm not convinced I'm going Minefield yet, and I definitely don't need to take that. 
Let's grab, uh, let's grab improved thrusters here. Okay, we'll definitely grab more more movement here. I want this build to eventually be Void Strike, which is both Blink and Strafe. Another thing we just have to invest in. Rate of fire is definitely good, but I'm going to grab whole strength here. I don't feel like at this moment the build is suffering offensively. Could be better, but it's functioning. The current scaling of the game, we're pretty well off. It's a tough choice. Three times Scorching Wake is pretty good. I also like just picking up Deadly Wake here and getting working towards Blink so we have another movement tool. And if we're going to go Void uh, Slice, the new super mod, that's going to happen for sure. 20% burn damage. All right. Darts are burn damage. So this is something we can take at any time that will be good. For that reason, maybe we can leave it for now. Magnitudes, no real downside for darts, all upsides. Payloads, pretty much all upsides, too. A lot of good choices in this pick. Let's just take a magnitude right now. I'm not going to be going full complement into weapons, but magnitudes, 20, 25% damage increase for darts, and then payloads that all over again. Dart's duration is based on the size of the dart, so that increase in size is just another form of damage. Alright, good enough. Haha, <laughs> temporal shield's so cool! Yeah, that's very true in Omega Kane. Uh, lowering the speed of the dart projectiles and then taking homing is another way to not take warp strike. True. Let's take regeneration here. I want to work towards that uh, dropping of the shield. Once we drop the shield, it removes shield mods from the pool, so that makes getting to the things we want nice here. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, if this was a normal darts build, I'd be snapping up three times twin strikes so fast but it's not a normal darts build. Where this is good is it improves the amount of projectiles generated per mine when we drop mines down, which will be the main source of dart damage at the end of this. The big issue I have with Twin Strike right now is the minus 7% recovery rate. If we're going into Vital Bond to try to sustain things with maybe... Um, overclock later we can't afford the loss and recovery rate uh, off the top of vital bond this was not a decision i was anticipating in this build but it looks like we're skipping twin strike three times defiance definitely isn't bad this brings up the question, what, uh, what wild mod am I actually taking here? I think Spontaneous Generation would be a good one. 
I think Defiance is fine if we're dropping our shield, getting additional 1.5 plating, which is flat damage reduction from all sources. Sounds awesome. Rapid fire is also good. Absorption's great defensively. Halo's just a lot of damage right now. I'm going to take a uh, payload here. The dynamic decision making in this game is so good. Okay, I'm absolutely sure we're taking drones. Targeting's also stellar right there. Still feeling like the build's operating okay without targeting. Targeting is always an interesting thing to cut from builds and see if you can get away with it. This game has been in development for about um, seven years now. It's two updates away from 1.0. Got one more polish update and then the 1.0 uh, release update. It's been, in my opinion, an extremely complete game for uh, many years, but uh, cool to see that come to a conclusion as well. Well, I think Assault Drones sound pretty good, because if we get to Fleet Commander, then we're applying vulnerability uh, with the attacks. What I kind of like about Defense Drones, though, is we can get to a similar power level for a lot less cost. one juggernaut well everything's fine here I guess I'll take assault drones assault drones are a pretty significant source of damage in an overseer build right Pandarar so it's not twin stick it's asteroid style which means you have thrust and turn Also, in the theme of Asteroid Style, you can warp from one side of the screen to the other, left to right, right to left, or up, down, etc. That's where the drift for Nova Drift comes in. You, uh, after you thrust, you're drifting, and then you maneuver uh, with your momentum. All right, I'm going to take this now. We're going to work off auto mines now. Ready to make the switch. Okay, so we're going to turn off. Oh, auto deploy mines wasn't on? Oh, I know what happened here. I have deploy mine on the fire key. That would, that would also do it. We're going to make this uh, X here. This is where my pinky is currently resting. I believe some targeting is in order here. Helps my allies hit a lot too. Hmm, a lot of good choices here. Yeah, definitely is an adjustment, Pandarar, but the uh, controls for this game are awesome. Lots of great mobility options for mods too. Terminal Direct is the one I want getting to Fleet Commander. There's a lot of other things I'd prefer here, but let's go ahead and take it. Yo, Nike, go. Thanks for 33 months. Really appreciate that continuation. Bloop. So we have Minefill, which allows us to store up our mines, and then we release them. Uh, well, I release them with X here, so I can 
drop a huge amount of mines on a single enemy. If you don't take the charge mines version of this, uh, it's actually pretty cool because the, the minefield increases mine effectiveness per mine fired. So when you store up a whole bunch like this, it's actually making everything that hits more effective. Or each subsequent explosion is stronger. Wow. This is like a really awesome winnow here. None of these other mods do I need to take to need to take nor do i want splinter is pretty okay with darts in the right situation this is just not it for splinter to be really good with darts you want like giant uh giant darts lots of offense potentially warp strikes so that the splinters can also go around the screen so banishing these all is, is sick sign me up Bloop. You've been bloopsin'. Ow. Just saw a downside of this build if you whiff on your, your mine placement. You gotta wait. Oh, man. Holy guacamole. What a screen right here. You know, adoration. Thanks so much for 20 months. Appreciate that continuation. Cheers. I think we have to take this because then the next wild mod we take is taken six times and banished from the pool. So we get a three full plating from Defiance. We could end up getting six spontaneous generation, which would be ridiculous. I'd also love to take overpower and the discord. Does this lower the mine construct limit? No, just mine assembly time is double. I don't know if I need to or want to take that right now. Good for where we're going. Let's go ahead and reroll here. Okay, there we go. Let's drop the shield mods out of the pool. Oh, dude, that's also really good for this kind of build. Six Scorching Wake. All right, that's going to be a yes. That is a, so many flames. Hit them with the afterburners. I think also like a direct synergy with this uh, minefield placement we're doing. Because we turn around, we blast them with flames and drop mines on them. Get bamboozled, enemy scum. I'm rolling here. Okay, let's take self-destruction and get towards Overseer. I think we're almost ready for that. Oh yeah, Discord orbs now. This gives us uh, orbs that will lash out at stuff. Gives us two per... It's a huge lad, man. Oh, I just whiffed that. Not used to this hotkey yet. Ow. Take it slow here.
This is definitely good for fire rate on allies. We're gonna have to take this no matter what. Let's just take it now. This build is kind of caught in between a couple different places right now, and that's okay. Definitely a working system. Okay, let's take overpower now. More firing from our allies. Ow. Okay, Vital Bond's going to be a must-take here. This gives uh, drones, or constructs, rather, a percentage of our regeneration, 70%, to be exact. A scary moment. It would behoove me to get to uh, over here, overseer here very soon. We're just controlling the main ship, you go over. These uh, additional bodies are called allies, and they're part of the construct tree. This is all fine. A lot of stuff I want here, but not really what I want to take at the moment. All right, I'll, I'll bite on Fleet Commander. Makes my drones better. Gives uh, two of the drones the ability to apply vulnerability on hit, which is awesome for darts. <laughs> Lost track of my ship there. That'll happen. Oh, snap. I... Better lucky than good. That's me, lucky. I mean, bless, this is also pretty good. Other than losing all of our rerolls, which we have quite a few. Okay, I'm gonna take efficiency, because we're gonna be taking Overseer the next time we see it. And that'll just mean we have 20% better regeneration. What I'm learning right now is there's still a lot of things that I'd like to have. Okay, let's go ahead and take Loaded Mines now. Now our mine uh, application becomes more important, but much stronger, because every mine I drop will now have darts inside of it. And darts, again, scale uh, on the amount of darts stuck in the enemy currently. I wouldn't say we have the best Glaucious build, but I've seen worse. It's gonna take a minute. The Scorching Wake's gonna be massively helpful here.
That shit went a lot better than I thought it was going to. That's cool. Sweet. Yo, Bergo, thanks for 102 months. Glad you could be here for a game you enjoy today. Cheers, man. I'm going to keep fishing here. This is all good stuff, but I want the one thing. I want Overseer right now. Okay, fine. I'll take Evolution. It's good. Oh, wow. This is actually sick here. Now the darts are going to bounce from enemy to enemy as long as they're still active, and that includes uh, darts created by mines. It's still our weapon projectile. That was not a mod I was expecting to see or think about. Good thought, though. Really great for a segment of enemies because the projectile can bounce in once at least. Can you give me what I want, game? No? Okay, let's take Deadly Wake. The only thing I can think of might be close to that spell backwards would be taking like polar inversion and then the explosion of the mine could pull enemies inward. But no, nothing that makes mine seeking. And also thank you for that 42 months for spell backwards. Really appreciate that. Crab wave. Get roasted, crabs. Yum. Okay, here's Blink then. Oh man, minefield inside, that's tough. Tough day to be that guy right now. Oops, all full of mines. There it is, finally, Overseer. Okay. Your basic and non-weapon construct limits are doubled. Plus one limit to advanced constructs. And we're going to lose a bunch of thrust here. So the loss in thrust is definitely hard to deal with, but I don't have to worry about firing my weapon anymore. It's only going to be on my allies and in my mines. I just got to worry about surviving.
Nice. Okay, I'm gonna make a small change here to my key bindings. I'm gonna turn deploy mine onto T now, which was previously my firing button. And no longer fire, so that's an easy one to put it on. Oh, also I can build up 16 mines now. Oops, all dead. Sorry about that. Sorry, partner. My plan is to save my mines for bigger enemies or more dire situations. And just utilize the flames and my allies for uh, the majority of the, the trash wave clear. Pretty valid strat to build like this is using the stabilization, which slows you down, and also using thrust to generate flames, so you can generate a more dense flame in a small area. Give them the old turn and burn. Okay, I don't want to take mortar with the minefield. I want to deploy the mines from behind. Agility is definitely a piece that I would like here. Turning faster when you're slower is a much better maneuverability. I should say agility becomes even more important when you're slower, I feel. Build still has some meat left at only level 38. Could be reaching upward of 50, so that's a lot of mods still left to get. Got him. Auto deploying mines is also an option in a build like this. Auto deploying mines feels nicer if you already have warp strike. And I don't think this build's going to make warp strike under any way that it goes. Okay, I think I should probably take Grace Protocol here because I do want to have my drones do. bonus damage and have more hull and also plus two construct limit so that's a percentage damage increase too we've already banished the other side uh candace's is good for dart damage but i don't think we need to go much further into weapons to have this work unless we're going to make burnout reactors i'm not convinced i take candescence which is a weird thing to say with six scorching strikes and darts Okay, here we go. Blammo. Uh, hey, what's up, dude? Here's a face full of mines. I think this guy gets uh, killed by the singularity here. Yeah, uh huh. You gonna go through it? Oh, nice, nice. What the hell? We'll see. Yeah, I think he, I think he's doing it right here. Bloop. Oh, big bada boom. That's the one. It's going to be a reroll for me. These are okay, though. All right, here's strafes. We're going to get a void, void slice in the pool now. 
can also just use strafe. It's almost certainly better just to keep strafe and blink uh, separated in this kind of build, but I want to experience the Void Slice in this Overseer build. Haven't tried that yet. Later, Tater. All right, bonus drone damage sounds amazing. It's like an 80% damage increase for drones. Sure. Oh god, his mind's just floating there, man. That sure is a cool looking effect. Damage is all right. It's not not bad for sure. Not bad, not bad. Really only about uh, 40,000 or so in totality from the full mines though, which is, well, it's not, it's not bad. Not great either though. It's very okay-ish. Will suffice. I'd say for our investment in weapons is actually quite good. We had more invested in weapons than the uh, mines would hit hard. Okay, here's Void Slice. Let's go. So this is basically works like Strafe and Blink. I'm going to use this going forward not to go in non-cardinal direction. I can also blink backwards pretty easily, but left and right, uh, at least for where I'm at with this game right now, the way my brain works, it's pretty hard to reliably know when to strafe left or right, depending on the position. Front or back, though? All right, I can do that. I look at Void Slice as Blink Plus. It goes a little bit further, and you can also hold two charges of it. It's pretty sweet. healing right now?
Ooh, that was a tough one. Dang. Could have blinked through him there. It's a little bit slow overall. Everything was great about that build, except for my own maneuverability. Well, now I know. All right, let's dream up another build. Um, our ads are about to play, so I'm going to take a short break here. It's going to stand up, stretch for like two minutes, and then we'll hop right into one more run of Nova Drift for our day. Um, I'm not sure what kind of uh, run I want to do. Might do another swords run or just head back into uh, something else. Okay, let's say we're going to do carrier, and then I'll figure it out during the break. Thanks for your patience during this brief intermission. We'll return momentarily for uh, some more Nova Drift action. All right, have returned. Thank you. I still don't know what build I'm doing. But we're going to start with carrier. Let's just play it from there. Okay, let's just say I'd like to do carrier with my shield still intact. Very often on carrier, I drop my shields. It makes all of the swarm constructs we generate a little more powerful, and then they all chase down enemies. Normally, uh, it splits in between. replenishing the shield and attacking enemy. One moment. Let's go ahead and go flak here. I'm going to take Flak because I can get away with taking a lot less weapon stuff uh, to utilize Flak here. Like Flak by itself, uh, it holds its own for a long time. It does well with weapon modifiers, but not necessarily a requirement. And I think to pull off the kind of build I want to do, uh, I, I don't know, like taking Railgun or something, I have to go very heavy into weapons, and it's almost certainly going to end in charge mines if I do so. Yeah, I want big shield here. 
Reflect or Orbital? Let's take Orbital Shield. One, it looks cool, and two, it's pretty good. Okay, rolling for Carrier here. I want to read this whole tooltip because it's definitely got some buffs and changes since I last played. You automatically assemble and deploy swarm constructs which apply vulnerability to targets. Nice. While a damaged shield protects you, a portion of your swarm constructs are assigned to recover your shield. While your shield is down or you have no shield, swarm constructs gain increased movement speed and rate of fire. Plus 15% shields, plus 250% crash damage to targets, resist knockback. Okay. 115 hole, 75 thrusts. Construct limit for swarm constructs, 4 plus 1 for every 2 levels. Applies 0.25% vulnerability per hit per construct. Okay, 1 second assembly time. What I like about this is that you have regenerative shields, essentially, when you play as this ship. Um, I've done a lot of builds with no shields on this guy. I'm not going to be taking any specialist here. Let's go... Double base weapon projectiles. Mm, let's go thrusters here. really want any of these, but I don't want to use a reroll either. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to restart this and use darts. Nothing wrong with flak, but I'm just imagining all that vulnerability being wasted on having flak seems tough. Let's go orbital again. Real shield's pretty great defense here. It's a nice synergy between having uh, having the carrier drones and having the regenerative shield on orbital. Yep, infusion darts definitely is a possibility. I don't know if I like the idea of infusion darts, though. We'll see. We'll see. I think for now, let's take Magnitude. We're going to need weapon damage. I'm not going to be going Overseer or having a lot of drone support, so we're going to be doing it by ourselves. flinch. Okay, flinched a little that time, though. I'll admit. Boom, bam, blammo. Alright, let's take three projectiles for now. It makes using darts a lot easier. Hey, what would Evolutionary Niche actually do here? Give us 1.5% shields, 2.5% uh, crash damage. 
That's it. Maybe knockback resist too. Just go ahead and take what's good in showing here, which is going to be whole strength. Hard to go wrong with some stats. That guy came out of nowhere. Okay, we'll take targeting. More maneuverability sounds great. The main weakness of carrier is that 75 starting thrust. It's pretty, uh, pretty slow. Okay, let's take even more. Lost 25% of our hole, but gained another 25% thrust. Now we're above normal. The nasty configuration early game. Holy guacamole. Let's get Blink going. Alright, Candescence is just raw damage for darts. Sign me up. Stream is certainly not bad. I'm just gonna take rapid fire though. I know where this build's going. It's going to an offensive place. With a bit of defense splashed in. Okay, stabilization. I don't believe I'm going to go Void Slice, but I would really like to have Strafe. Shield clutching it, dude. So, as the orbital shield increases in size, it can eliminate enemy projectiles or uh, make them smaller at the very least. The image is very kind of okay right now. Mm -hmm. 
drop in that track so good. The advantage of having a slower build, more amazing music. Let's take Velocity here. I do believe we're going Warp Strike on the starts build. All right, mine time. We're going to go into auto deploy mine on this one. Payloads big time damage. Let's go. Dart duration, which is a big portion of its damage, is determined by projectile size. This definitely uh, is good for our little guys and for making mines too. Homing strikes, I charge charts. All right. <laughs> oh man, excuse me. Choking on cat hair right now. Ooh. All right, we're good. Hell construction's good, charge shot's good, homing strike's good, calibrate, eh, can be good. When our mines are charged and we have warp strike, that's when the build pops off officially. Agility, I guess. As soon as I started taking agility in this game, it's like I can't get away from taking it now. It's just, it's such an improvement in your overall maneuverability. It's like indescribably good. Strafe 2. Okay, here we go. Loaded mines. Yo, good Dave. Thanks for that raid, dude. Hope you had a nice stream today. Harold, thanks for 12 months. Appreciate that year as well. One whole year. My man. Oh, I really want to take Revelation, but Snipe puts Warp Strike in the pool. Let's take Revelation anyways. We're only level 20. We probably will not see Revelation again if we turn it down. Whereas Snipe will almost certainly see again if we take a turn down here. Oh, it's Crabbert time. I mean, dang, dude, three slipstreams and our movement's pretty much solved right now. Let's go. 
We have to use the space brakes a little more often on stabilization because we have uh, less less friction now, so we're a lot more floaty. A few more inputs, but a really nice benefit. 21% more thrust is awesome. Going to be a slow crabbert fight, though, let me tell you. in this fight. Killing the crabs is killing the boss health. Ooh, I don't know if I've ever been this far behind on damage on this fight before. I think it's spicy. Okay, shield went down. That's tough. Try to get that back online here. There we go. a serious fight. Man. Time to remember to breathe for a second. Alright, next up, I don't really want any of these. Burst Fire is quite good for our mines, and it would have been nice for this fight, too. Yes, Cat, what do you think would happen if we blink directly into the railgun? Hear me out. Oh, that was cool. All right, Warp Strike is officially in the pool. This is all good stuff, but uh, let's roll here. Can almost live with mine specialists, but uh, with the focus we went into to start this build, I'm not going to take that route. I'm going to roll again. There it is. All right, your projectiles can screen wrap once. Minus 50% total weapon targeting for projectiles that have wrapped. Minus 12% rate of fire. When you screen wrap, 10% plus 5 of your current hull and shields are removed. This removal cannot be mitigated, but also can not reduce hull or shields below 1. I.
I'm going to take a Galvanic Outburst here. We are taking damage, and Galvanic Outburst is really nice return and is in the burn damage uh, as well. Okay, I'm going to take Guidance because this really improves our projectile's ability to hit after they screen route. Means they still got some targeting left after that happens. I said, I said an idea for a build we're going to do after this. We're going to do one more run after this. And I'm going to dub it Blender in a Can. But first, the rest of this run. which has got a lot of meat left here. Yeah, I'm going to take Charge Shot, but my intention here is not to actually charge my weapon, it's to charge my mines. Let's get strafe working. This fight could actually be kind of weird. The one hindrance on this fight is you cannot screen wrap uh, up and down or left and right. I think this one's just going to take a minute. It's going to happen. Okay, there's one orb down. Look at these little lads replenishing my shield. Thank you, little lads. Oh my god. I almost died. <laughs> Real close. Taking one twin strike here doesn't seem bad. One more projectile. Yeah, additional projectile sounds like a great ad. I bet now if we took a ricochet though, it'd take us from four to three projectiles. That's my feeling. Okay, this build likes ricochet, but uh, ricochets Probably on the same, same level as Twin Strike, damage-wise. More darts might actually be better since darts scale off of more darts stuck in the enemy. Alright, I'm going to take Minefield here. It's overall more dart projectiles on the screen. We'll be applying 
mines more actively as well. And I think has a better synergy with charge mines that allows multiple sources to take benefit of the charge faster. Oh, snap. Okay, uh, I will take one more Twin Strike here. I am sure that five projectiles is much better than three. And since we're doing a mines build as well, uh, this is more darts for every single mine that we apply on the play field. We just went from like an okay damage build to a great damage build with those two pickups. Uh, we did lose, uh, what do we lose for that again? Recovery rate and slower shield cooldown. Okay. And do. Charge mines is the next step here. <laughs> Get mega darted. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, corrosion is actually massive for dart damage. Doesn't seem like damage is the current issue, but I'm sure I want to take this and purification as well. Just damage increase across the board. I am not going to take Void Slice on this one. I think I'd rather keep Strafe and Blink separated. You can see the use case for Void Slice being very good in certain builds, but I think maneuverability is king of the late game. Look at all those numbers. Eh. That's a reroll. It's also a reroll. Here we go. Charge mines. Your mines charge at 100% of your charge rates. Which just means there are going to be a lot bigger darts coming out of the mines. Oh, I didn't know that. So Void Slice scales off of Blast Radius. That makes sense. Oh man, there's some huge darts coming out of those mines. Holy guacamole. Some regular torpedoes. Meow. Ah, 
<sighs> I'm not minding any of these choices. I guess getting to Essence Sap and Gemini Protocol is probably the in-game defense here. So let's take the stuff for that. Also, now that we're generating so many global projectiles that are so impressive, we need to make sure we're scanning the screen for all the XP that we can get. Once XP starts going towards the player, uh, you have it 100% of the time, but it can expire left on the edge. There's a direct consequence of having a uh, warp strike. Things are dying as they're spawning sometimes. Dang, look at those numbers. Hit him with the biggins. Rolling. Okay, well, weapon mastery is not going to be bad. Weapon damage, uh, projectile size, which is duration, rate of fire. If taking weapons mastery and a weapons build is wrong, I don't want to be right. Ooh. Hung out in that field for too long. Wave 130, huh? Wow. Ooh, that was a toughie. That was scary, man. That was scary. This guy's also scary to have spawn while there's a singularity on screen because he's immune to the effects of singularity. As his phase two spawns one. All right, we living, we living. All right, terminates next. Uh, enemies die when they're at twelve percent health or less, and they get hit with a weapon. That's great. Oh, you did. Oh, God. Oh, it was a really brutal spot to be, man. Build is uh, quite slippery. Okay, Essence Sap. When you damage an enemy, store 1% of your damage is Essence. Essence causes your hole to recover over time. Uh, we want to do this because we have darts. So when a dart stuck at enemy, it's generating essence. Just a very cheap way to improve our recovery. Using the battery ship, which increases projectile size, would be the closest you could get to that, uh, Vassanor. Taking things like heavy caliber can also improve dart size. Oh my god, am I dead? Oh my god. Completely lost track of my ship there. I'm really surprised he didn't pop off again. He must have been on cooldown. Better lucky than good. That guy's a bit of a nemesis to uh, dart builds because when you use mines with darts, you get darts sticking into the front of that guy, and that does uh, a lot of return damage if you end up in front. Alas, we live. Okay, we'll take this. 
Hole and shield recovery for each ignited enemy. That's every enemy that has a dart in it. So everything on screen. With this build, almost everything will always have at least one dart stuck in it. Probably a lot more. The 40% burn damage increase more than makes up for the weapon damage decrease down here too. The mine specialist is tempting because it increases our mine effect. But I don't want to lose the 40% uh, construct creation time on the little guys. They're quite powerful at this moment. Let's roll here. Does this get me to Gemini Protocol? No, it's not that one. I'm just going to take shield durability here. I think we're at a moment where taking stats makes a lot of sense. All right, we're going to have a much different experience versus the crab this time than we did last time. Just you wait. At the start of this build, we hardly had enough damage to uh, defeat this boss. Now he got roasted before he even summoned the, the first phase. Amazing how much better your field build feels after another uh, 25 upgrades. Well, not overly fond of those. Is this the increased distance of orb and power-up attraction? All right, I'm going to take this. I think it's going to get increasingly more difficult for me to collect all of the XP. This allows me to control more of the central zone and not have to worry about uh, so much of the little stuff. Also, that other effect of resurrecting is all right, I suppose. Hey, Akratian, thanks for 56 months. Appreciate that. Thanks for the belated birthday wishes, too. Cheers. Glad to be here on this planet in this universe for another year. We did it. Convergence is okay here. I think it's kind of a wash for five projectiles right now. Probably best at three. Let's roll it. Yeah. I 
Maybe one more here. Okay, let's take efficiency because Gemini Protocol lets us split damage between our hull and our shields. And then we have Essence Sap to further infuse that. So that's kind of like the end game for our regeneration. Uh, and also it means that our shield can stay up for longer, creating some really massive orbs if we end up taking a lot of damage, which is cool. And also quite helpful. Kind of a spoopy wave. You've been out maneuver. Oh my god, this wave is super, super gnarly. Oh my god, my shield just went down too. I am officially scared right now. Oh wow, okay. I thought I made it through the screen wrap, but I did not. Uh oh. Yoinks, that was a super scary situation. Definitely could have cleared that wave, but we did not. All right, I have one more build in store for today's stream. I'm going to call this one Blender in a Can. I thought of it during our last run, and it should be a fun one. Give me uh, just a moment here. Just going to uh, stretch real fast, refill my water, cool off after that very intense moment, and then we will head into another run of Nova Drift. All right, I have returned. Here we go. Tapping back in here. All right. So we're going to do a somewhere in between a couple of the builds that we've done so far. We're going to go for uh, swords, which are the new weapon in the Vorpal update. Swords are awesome. They count as advanced constructs, and they do a lot of damage based on movement speed, crash damage, and other factors. But mostly here, I'm using swords as a uh, temporary damage source or a damage source that's uh, a little more passive scaling. 
So swords even gain damage per your level. That's awesome. So anyways, we're going to go into the, that minefield build where we drop the mines behind us, but this time we're not going to... Uh, We're not going to go into Overseer to have 16 mines. We're going to go for 8. We're going to be able to drop those 8 pretty consistently and quickly on targets that spawn. Uh, what color do we want our swords to be? Go for purple here. I actually like playing with Temporal Shield. It's uh, arguably not like the best shield in this game. But it does have a pretty powerful effect of slowing stuff around it. And if you're uh, maneuvering around things, it can be really strong. Okay, no engineer here. Oh yeah, engineer also gets an extra pair of swords base. Fantastic. debating here let's just go ahead and take elegant construction for now should be more than survival with sword only sword's really awesome at surviving the early game of nova drift uh, i like it a lot for that it kind of falls in the same category as like flak but even better where you can deal with almost all of the hazards of the early game just using the base weapon which is a great feeling Allows a lot of freedom to other build uh, archetypes. <sighs> I am going to take turrets on this, I think. Just turrets. Yeah, maybe just turrets at Mines Works. Now, I'm going to drop turrets from this. I, I do think they'd be good, but they're going to make a little more clutter. Let's keep it free for the so everybody can see the blender. All right. Now, we're going to go ally and mines. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, all right. Turrets do not receive swords, though. The only construct that can use your weapon type is allies. Eh. Kind of considering if I'm going to go into... Uh, vital bond here or not. I'm not convinced. Let's use our reroll here. Okay, Interceptor sounds cool. They're swiping. Kind of want to try Wingman once I get the mines together. I think the swords and allies work really well together, too. Uh, they have enough range that they're actually effective. Uh, and they fire often enough to be substantial. I think efficiency will be good. All right, let's just say for the purpose of this one, I am going to drop my shield. Let's start working towards that. There it is. No more shield mods in the pool. Alright, here's mines. Let's go.
Definitely doing auto mines for now. We're a ways away from actually applying the blender. Yeah, our maneuver is pretty sick. Uh, unlocks overpower. Let's do it. Wow. A bunch of stuff I want here. I'm pretty tempted to take Discord because I probably won't see it again. I think it's going to be really efficient on a uh, melee style build. Yeah, I want this now, but I probably need this for later. Also, purple swords is where it's at. Sick. Let's increase our whole strength by 20% since we're only using whole right now. giving me like a, a real like water bug vibe the movement and the swords and stuff pretty cool man pretty cool I'll take it we don't have to rush into offense we're pretty good on offense for a minute love that the swords can reach back there oh god I don't want to die Oh, it had double double music glitch there. Got it. What was that? There it is. You know, I don't think I'm ever going to have the allies with wingman on swords. Like, the idea of having the allies float around you and also swing the swords seems desirable, but when I'm really thinking about it, not so much. Because they're just going to die as I try to turn around things. Especially if I'm applying mines, I'd basically have to sweep the ally through the enemy to have any chance of uh, hitting there. I don't think I'm going to do that. Alright, we're only using hull. Let's just go ahead and grab absorption. It's flat damage reduction for every damage source. Makes us much safer versus lots of little projectiles, which happens uh, pretty frequently. I just tried to blink there. Not going to happen, sir. Might as well take evolution here. Looks good because it is good. Ooh, that ally construction speed is is something. I mean, yes, do want, but also 10% hull damage resist is incredible. I think we just saw how long it takes us to, re to make one ally. Let's give them 70% of our regeneration, which is like, okay, six something. Rate of fire is pretty good here. Go ahead and take more movement stuff. It's not felt like damage has been a problem so far.
That is quite good. This is also interesting. I think I'd rather take a multiple of this with Revelation or something. Let's just take the uh, increase in weapon size and damage. You can you felt that on the first mine explosion, how much nicer that is now. White. the old manual deploy mine here That's what I'm talking about a great candidate for uh, manual mines because the plan is to go into minefield and then drop a bunch of swords on a single target. Okay, payload's definitely good. Fire rate's fine. Agility is what I'm going to take here though because I am, I am addicted to this mod. It's so good. Especially with swords. Get roasted. Scorching make is another one I would take a multiple of. Let's take force armor here. do apotheosis blender now that sounds cool all right let's go into the minefield now let's get us more mine assembly speed when we release our mines we release them all at once so we can build up like a bulk and then drop it on a single enemy a little bit less um accurate but just as good okay, let's go adaptive armor let's keep this defense going We have an eight mine maximum now. I'm waiting for something worthy to drop this eight mine on. Let's go ahead and take Deadly Wake. This is it right here. Womp. Oh yeah. Okay, that wasn't as effective as I would have hoped, but it was still pretty good. The damage on that will get better as we level up. Okay, uh, actually, self-destruction will do it, because that's going to make explosions uh, when the mines go off. And I believe when the swords dive on the mines as well. Let's see if this is true. Oh yeah. Yes, they do an explosion at the end because it's creating those advanced constructs. It's going to be a huge damage increase on the loaded mines. Okay, let's go for global damage increase. Let's go for payload here. 30% weapon damage. There it is. That's also going to help big time. 
didn't mean to let those mines go, but I certainly just did. <laughs> sort of in the ultimate time to have the uh, the setup there. Am I dead? Nearly almost, but not quite. Awesome. We all know that almost doesn't count. I'm almost preferring the version of the spell that does not have minefield, which is surprising. The manual deploy regular mines were also very cool. Albeit a little harder to manage. Oof. Mercy, mercy. Alright, I will take blink, yeah. Swing and a miss. I'm actually going to go into uh, auto deploy mines here. Make this into more like an AoE build. So, this lessens our effectiveness versus uh, maybe single target not being able to drop that huge uh, amount. But it's going to greatly increase our overall coverage. And if I end up taking like charge mines here, it'd be pretty sick. I'm leaning towards strafe. I'm surprised how nice this has felt without drones. Let's keep it that way. This run's still worthy of the the name Blender in a Cam. It didn't work out quite how I thought it would. Still pretty good. Go for channeling here. Stats. This is an okay build versus Glaucious. Uh, this might be one where auto deploy mines is not as efficient, but looks like we're still doing great for damage right now. Get roasty. All right, no void slice for me on this one. Does increase the damage of swords. I like adrenal module too, because we are taking damage and that increases our global damage after that. Priority zero is interesting. This is where wingman could maybe work. Just taking priority zero two when we do lose a uh, ally makes it a lot easier to replenish. But is that better than damage right now? Probably not. Let's finish off this tree with adrenal module. 
as I'm confident we're going to be semi-injured a lot. Okay, let's see here. I think we take kinetic boost now. This is where we get to capitalize on having having strafe. Uh, voice slice definitely does work uh, well with swords, just not wanting to use it here. I prefer the added mobility on this particular build. Celestial Lance is kind of interesting to think about here. Yo, Captain Trips, thanks for 28 months. Appreciate you keeping it dapper. Cheers. Let's do it. Now we're also creating um, flame damage around us as we travel. The faster we go, the the bigger the lance gets, but also the more self-damage that we take. So I'm not going to try to use uh, Celestial Lance super aggressively here, but it does activate when I when I do strafe. So uh, it's it's adding damage to our overall strike. Not a bad form of AoE either. Thinking rate of fire sounds fine. Man, Celestial Lance is pretty good damage just scooting around. I like it. I haven't taken this mod in too many builds. It's always kind of felt like more of a crash damage build mod to me, but I'm seeing it in different light on this. Funny what happens when you take things you haven't taken that often. They end up being good. Hey, what is this? Celestial Surge. Okay, while well, using Celestial Lance, stabilization slows you abruptly and launches a burning orb for the damage of which proportional to your Celestial Lance side. Alright. I like it. It's going to be more incidental than anything, I think, but uh, good to know. Another form of damage we can do. That'd be an interesting addition to Overseer. Also, I bet you can get some really extreme lances or orbs going on with enough movement speed. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness, look at this little guy right here. 
Pretty cute. Alright, let's take charge shots so I can get charge mines. And also, for now, I can just, you know, charge up my swords too, which is fun. Noise. It's not actually too hard to just uh, shoot in a straight line like that. Just uh, just use the strafe and then immediately blast. It's not too bad at all. A little bit of used to, but what isn't? I'm gonna use some rerolls here, fishing for charge mines. I think. Got a lot of mods in the pool to block that. Choose a few more here. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god, am I dead? I am not dead yet. Awesome. Here real quick. So this celestial surge, celestial lance, and stabilization. That's it, huh? Okay. This runs made me think of other builds that mod might work in. I can think of more than a couple. Okay, let's take this one full circle. I'm going to take Overseer now, and then I'm going to turn off auto-deploy mines, and I'm going to set the mines to a T, which was my firing button previously. Now I can have 16 mines saved up. Ah, there it is. That's the one. I'm not totally convinced that auto mine's not preferable here.
kind Daisy do. That is true. You're right here in this cuppy next. To me. Thank you. And then you're going to use me as a bridge, right? Okay. There's no treats on me, Daisy do. There's no treats on me. You got to come over a little bit if you want to lay in my lap, okay? Yeah. Okay, you're a sweet girl. That's nice. That's nice. You're not helping, though. All right, time for my cat to get me killed. Here we go. Okay, I do have Vital Bond right now, so these guys are okay. Uh, this is raw sword damage. Let's take it. Okay, Daisy. Okay. I get it. I get it. You're a Daisy do. You want to lay in the most inconvenient spot you possibly can. That's great. All right. Listen here, Daisy. I love you as a kidders, but you are just being too much right now. Too much. This isn't going to work. Okay. It's not. There we go. That'll do it. Literally pushing my hand off the keyboard. That's what I wanted right now. That's the one. Big help. No. Okay, you're done. You're done. You're out of here, lady. Yeah, okay. Later, tater. Later, tater. of bad kidders. I'll take core shielding here. It does help with self damage resist as well. Spaghetti. Getting weird in here. He just stopped trying to use this fireball so aggressively. That's what it boils down to. Okay, almost dead doesn't even count. Oh no. Well, I missed position, then I died. That's how it happens. GG. I guess my takeaway from that build is that... Losing the swords for taking Overseer is kind of painful. All right, we're going to do one last run. We're just going to do a Firefly Sword run, which I have not done yet. And I think I'm going to try to go back into that Celestial Lance type deal. Pretty fun.
Yeah, the swords are a very nice defense and kind of a nice assurance to have. A lot of damage on Engineer 2 with that doubling. Alright, we're gonna go Amp Shield here. No Firefly showing, okay. There it is. Okay, self damage and crash resistance, great. And also kind of a AoE aura, but more so behind the ship. Good, good incidental damage. Let's not worry about more thrust yet. I'm gonna go shield cooldown. Elegant construction increases the amount of hull on our swords, so we can hit more stuff. I'm gonna be using the swords as a main. The HP of the swords is pretty important. You can get roasted. Go for thrusters there then. Let's see, the more thrust we have, the larger the burn radius is around us. Okay, let's take some mines. I am going to set these to auto deploy though. I do want to go shielded, but not right now. Let's just go flash shielding. Gonna make our shield super tiny, but also super quick to recharge. Then we're gonna add some effects that make our shield do damage when it goes down, and then apply the shield to our construct. All right, I'll take take loaded mines here. It's definitely going to happen. A lot more AOE to work with. Okay, I'm going to say no minefield here. Well, here's one. Volatile shields. When your shield breaks, discharge is violently devastating nearby targets for 1,000 blast damage. 1,000 blast damage. Please. Increase our hull, so if we're having this super weak shield that's going down, we're probably going to want to survive past that. Alright, not an infusion build. This doesn't work for uh, shielded drones, but it's still interesting to think about. We can take absorption here. Death Blossom might be interesting. Might stop me from going uh, shielded drones if it works. Let's see what it reads. It triggers your weapon to fire, so this would work. Okay, I want to see this. Drop my shield, please. Or don't. Okay, so it does fire my weapon, and the shield goes down. Cool. Well, that changes things a little bit.
Now I think we do want infusion. Very tempted just to roll here. Alright. Force armor is just really good. Stabilization, fine. I do want agility in a sword build for sure. scary. Went big on damage, almost paid a big price. That's fair. Yeah, having felt that, let's get some regeneration going here. Sounds cool. Yo, Jaxie, thanks for 50 months. Appreciate that half century. Thank you so much. Mind Specialist actually works out great here. Because we're not using uh, anything else other than, I, I suppose, where we lose assembly speed on this. 40%. So I'd take our assembly speed uh, up quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. I am sure, though, that uh, we're going to take Discharge. Because we're going to go for Infusion here. And we're going to infuse the swords with lightning, and then we're going to grab Tempest Break after that. Should be awesome. The Sword Lancer. For now, though, we'll deal pretty heavy shield damage um, and unleash a lightning bolt when we fire. Yeah, agility sounds pretty good. This charge is actually a pretty considerable source of damage. One multiples of scorching make them to take it. That's not bad. Let's just take payload here. A lot of damage for us and for our mines. My fire rate's now a smidge slower than I'd prefer, but our hit's substantial. Alright, this is technically damage. This is also damage. I think Deadly Wake's flying, so we're probably not going to take Streamline. Uh. Yeah, I'll take that for now. It's not what I wanted to see, but it's part of the build. Wow. The damage on these swings is real.
All right, here's Tempest Break. When your shield breaks, it discharges powerful bolts of energy. While your shield is down, its cooldown cannot be interrupted. 30% faster shield cooldown, 30% shield effect power, 10% thrust, minus maximum shields. Here we go, Infuse. Okay, just right now deals 8% of your current shield self damage to you. When you fire your weapon, it gains added damage equal to 400% of the self damage that would just try to divide it between projectiles fire. So now when we hit with our weapon, they're going to be lightning swords as long as our shield is up. And when our shield does eventually go down, it does massive amount of damage to everything in the area and cannot be stopped from regenerating. That's a pretty nice effect. Wow, wow, the damage is real. We have lightning swords until we take any damage at all, and then everything explodes. Cool. Just don't take any damage then, right on. What a loot snake, that was dope. All right, blink sounds awesome at the moment. Lightning swords are pretty amazing. Don't believe uh, Leviathan gets weapons interactive, but I could be mistaken on that. Yeah, okay, strafe it is. Boy, I don't like any of these. Okay, there's Revelation, I'll take that. I'd be down for like a three times Scorching Wake right now. That'd be a pretty awesome mod. These lightning swords are hitting a lot harder and covering a lot more area than I thought they would. Could be a great candidate for charge swords on the ship. Let's go ahead and take power reserves and play with that idea. Charged lightning swords? Okay. This spell will certainly be Void Slice. That's completely on theme with uh, what we're doing right now. All right, there it is, charge shots. So now we can charge up our swords and wait to fire them until so they're beefed up. There they are. Yeah, our mobility is still very good uh, while charging right now. Be about normal uh, for other ships, actually. Oh yeah. Ooh. 
Three times Scorching Wake, uh, 21% battlefield size is very interesting stat for swords. Or we can just pick up Void Slice here. Even Slipstream is kind of um, tempting. I think we take Void Slice for now. Oh man, look how far we can teleport here. That's incredible. Void Slice is going to be important for boss fights because it removes 7% of the boss's total health. So it's a way for us to deal damage early in the fight. Uh-oh. It hurts when I get hit like that. Okay, so if you start the swing before you teleport, pretty nice. Ranker is actually not too bad here. I don't like the minus thrust, but I feel like we're pretty maneuverable. Let's roll it. Hmm. Okay, kinetic boost for sure. Global damage increases as your speed does. That seems extremely fair. All right, I feel like three times Scorching Wakes is totally acceptable here. We're zipping and zooping around, so leaving a trail of flames behind us increases our percentage coverage uh, on the map. It's a very important stat for surviving. Oh man. Get your core completely sliced open. Their scorching make looks okay. Actually, I think maybe charging the swords is a little bit weird here. Let's go ahead and just give the charge over to the mines. And some very big sword explosions from the mines. This will also increase our area coverage by a lot. I gotta play around with Apotheos' swords more. It just seems like it's pretty great. Wave 100. Woo! Get sliced and diced, my dude. Dang, we just stray Glaucius there. I'm impressed. Oh, I mean, efficiency is probably not wrong here. We're not continually firing, so it's a pretty big increase in our overall stats. Also helps get our shield back faster so we get back to lightning swords, which is the real damage here. Never go back to loot Snake Lake, because there's no snakes left. I killed them all. No snakes left.
mean, this is quite interesting. I think we can't take this with swords on this character right now. Self-destruction of the hand is just a pretty good mod here. Okay, conversions, fine. Shield durability, whatever. Kind of like defiance here too. Let's roll again. I think we have enough source of burn damage, including the lightning from the the weapon that candescence is pretty powerful. Probably all right. Don't mind doing some crash damage, though. I'm going to leave that be for now. Shield recharge seems okay. Shield effect radius, eh. I think what we're seeing here is we're kind of running out of things we really want to take. I'll take self-destruction. Get a nice explosion on the mines at the end for that. I keep trying to strafe. <laughs> what a, what a life. I'll take adaptive armor just as a non-offensive pick. I get some damage reduction when we take damage. Seems fair. Quite the spoopy wave there. A lot of enemies at once. fire rate right now <laughs> sounds awesome fire rate is definitely a little bit lower than I'd prefer that 15% made it feel a lot better
actually think Minefield's pretty okay here. It's okay damage. 25% of crash damage modifiers. It's 5% damage on swords. I feel like the lightning is more damage than our swords right now. Yo, Lex, thanks for making it official with Prime. Appreciate you making it official. Thanks so much. All right, what's next here? Let's, let's just roll this. Okay, Burnout Reactors, I think, is too harmful to our sword constructs right now. So it would make mines go out a lot faster. Repulsive munitions sounds scary here. Let's go ahead and take Apotheosis here. So now we have less hull and shield, but we have, uh, we don't collide with enemies. It's a lot more defensible if the waves get even more crowded. Also good if we want to like, go super fast to deal uh, damage, which I'm not convinced. That's the what we're doing here. Everything's cool, man. <laughs> Love it. I don't know, it's not too late to take, like, defensive drones, is it? What, 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 level 39? Just thinking of things left that I really want to take, there's not much in the pool that I'm like, I need this. Yeah, let's do it. I think, like, Counter Pulse would take me to a place where I'm feeling okay about my level of AoE. Drones are never a bad add to any build. Can even absorb some big hits. using stabilization right now. It feels funky because it is funky. Good way to build up flames on a single target, though. Big time. Not bad, man. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Stones. Now we can find any recursive wild mob we want. We're going to take it. There's uh, four copies of it. Not sure which one I want here. There's got to be something that's decent.
I gotta get used to having apotheosis and knowing that I can go through enemies or some enemies. Yo, right on, Trav. This has to be an awesome game to watch for your baby. Has to be. Gotta be mint. All right, here's defense threads. Ooh, four times scorching wake, bringing us to seven scorching wakes. <laughs> I mean, okay. Hope you don't mind being completely quenched in flame enemies. Okay, then. That is some damage right there. Gotta be careful playing with this not to uh, get myself killed. One great thing about Apotheos, we can basically park inside of them with this uh, stabilization uh, fire or just go right through them with it. With a lot of damage at once. We got a 5k burn stack just for going through them. Okay, I want defense drones. I'm gonna take drones. Let's roll here. Burnout reactors, nah. I mean, this is all right. Uh, drone maximum hull. I think getting to defense drones is more important, though. I keep rolling here. Dang. One more. All right, I'll take channeling because it's survivability. I think survivability is the big concern on this one for sure. Get roasted, you crab. Keep trying to strafe. <laughs> so that I do that double blink, that's exactly what's happening. There's really very little reason I'd ever avoid slice twice in a straight line. I'm sure it does exist as some kind of dodge. Oh snap, GG. I lost track of my health there. I didn't think I was taking damage, but those little guys do an explosive radius. Well, such is the way of the drift. That was a pretty fun build.
Well, all right, buddy. Thanks for the great show today. Had an awesome time uh, playing those games. Bloons TD6 and a little bit of Nova Drift to finish things off. Uh, appreciate you all very much. We'll do it again soon. Discord for updates, as always. Appreciate you all. Catch you on the flip side. Looking forward to it already. Take her easy.